As it turns out in church, we love to give everyone who's part of the worship experience some preparation. So I pick scriptures, Reverend Stephanie picks scriptures months in advance. And then sometimes the world happens. And so the scripture that we had today is a piece of a longer passage in the Gospel of Mark chapter 7. And what I'm going to do is tell you about the piece that we had and then I'm going to tell you about the context that it came in. Okay, so what Sharon read for us so beautifully is this part where Jesus is talking to people who are labeled as Pharisees who come to him and have some questions for him. And as the Pharisees came to him, they were wondering, you know, trying to trick him as they often did. And these are folks who are religious adherents who are following very strictly laws, or at least as they call things laws. And what Jesus was doing here was pointing out, okay, so for example, you think you are following the scriptures closely, but let me ask you this. Do you believe that you can get away with not honoring your mother and father by bypassing that one of the Ten Commandments and saying, well, instead I'm giving my money to the religious, to the temple, to the religious figures. Do you think you can get away with not honoring your mother and father because you gave money to the temple? Well, this is what you do all the time. It's called a korban, which is a word that doesn't appear anywhere else in the Bible, but it's clearly something these folks made up need to the temple, right? And instead of honoring mother and father and following the commandment, they got this little bypass and Quran or whatever that was became so important that Jesus had to point it out saying the spirit of the law was to care for people and you pick this one little thing to focus on so that you can bypass God's will. Well, that doesn't work, you hypocrites. So, with that in mind, I'm going to read to you some more of this passage from Mark chapter 7. And I want you to just kind of imagine why I want to read the rest of it, maybe in what's going on these weeks. Amen. Amen. So here's the rest of that context. They asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders? They eat with defiled hands. And he said to them, I have prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, the people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me. Human precepts as doctrines. Abandon the commandment of God to human tradition. Then he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say that if anyone tells father, whatever you support, whatever support you might have had for me is korban, that is an offering to God, then you no longer permit doing anything for a father or a mother, thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed on. And you do many things like this. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and then entered the house, his disciples asked him about what he had just said about this parable. And he said to them, eh, then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside can't defile, since it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and goes out into the sewer? Thus he was declaring all foods clean. And he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles. It is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, or avarice, 
wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly, all these evil things come from within and they defile a person. That was the full reading. And as I asked, can you imagine why I might want to read this right now? Because one thing that annoyed the bejesus out of Jesus was hypocrites. And he talks about them in, in a way that I think any of us to hear. And let me tell you about these hypocrites, because they come up in the Gospels pretty consistently. Hypocrite, by the way, comes from a Greek word, which sounds very similar, Hippocrates, with a K. And, well, that's how we transliterate it in English. Hippocrates, which means acting something out as if on a stage. A hypocrite is someone acting something out on a stage that is inconsistent with what they know to be right. And these actors, these performers, were all around Jesus, and he could not see. They had many a stage, they had the public square, they had houses of worship, they had the equivalent of CNN or Fox News or whatever they're on, right? They had that. They had the courts, which we know because we see that when Jesus is up for trial. They had the whole government, because government is always hypocritical, right? That's why we have checks and balances, allegedly. All over the place, and stand them. And just like any actor, and nothing against actors, we have so many actors in this congregation. <laughs> just to point out, we love you, we don't love hypocrites. But anyway, just like any actor, they had their employers, and the actors were under con to pull off the drama of entertainment, to draw people's attention, to make them captive to their performances. And their performances, the job done. The crowds, which were eager to get the drama in their own heads, were hungry for distraction. And that distraction was profitable people who held the dollars and the power. And so, so-called religious traditions emerged by the most influential people around them, relig religious leaders. They controlled people's hearts and their minds. They controlled how people felt that they had access to the divine and thus access to potentially eternal life if that was part of their belief. And that was powerful because that's another piece of some of the religious movements that were coming up around Jesus at the time, was that they were really thinking about eternal life now and how you get to that. Teacher, that I, eternal, I inherit eternal life, someone asked him similarly. And if you remember Jesus' response, he says, well, you know how. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your neighbor as yourself, he said. But all of these movements were coming up to create actors on a stage, to draw people into their drama that, you know what, you don't have to honor your mother and father, just give me some money. Oh, you don't need to protect the poor, feed them, care for them, just give your money to the church. Oh, they didn't have church then. Give your money to us. <coughs> Oh, you don't need to worry about how children are going to grow up in the world. Just give your money to my organization that's going to make sure that they're born. Oh, you don't need to worry about immigrants at the border, immigrants in your cities. Mm -mm. Just give money to my nonprofit that helps pay for my gigantic mansion in the hills. We're familiar with those who set up these standards of bypassing God's commandments and the things that God cared the most about because these folks set up dramatic stages that are very seductive to us. We all are drawn in by the drama, again, because we 
too have a lot going in on our in our heads and we want the distraction why on earth do we scroll through social media so much why do we pay attention to things that we know make us hurt because we need the drama to be somewhere else than us and as we get swept into it and we start to hear all these things from people who want to control us and get our money which is really and labor then we start to think that what they're telling us are our tradition. They've just made up to control us. And that was certainly the case in Jesus' time. And it's so important and it's so bad that he spends so much time yelling at them. Like, think about it for just a moment. What did Jesus yell about? What did he get mad about? But this kind of manipulation. Now, people who want to control you and get you to give them money labor will tell you it was something else. Oh, Jesus was focused on making sure the unborn are born. Or Jesus was really focused on trying to make sure that you are a certain kind of righteous person who goes to church every week and tithes and pays attention to what we pay attention to politically, right? And so people have done this since the days of Jesus' time, acting out on a stage, and we get drawn in. And then from there, everything falls. And right now it is clear that things are bad. Things are bad and they're going to get worse. They're going to get a lot worse. And I don't want to spend too much time there because you know that. I see. What I do want to help you with and what my job is to do is to pay attention, help you to, and to help you to find a way that even when everything else is bad around us, your heart is real and true and pure and focused on what God is wanting you to focus on. Honoring others, loving them, loving yourself, loving your enemy, making sure that we care for the poor, living out a life that follows the same commands and precepts and actions as Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus wanted. If you wonder what Jesus cared about, Look what he did. And the same is true for us. If you wonder what we care about, look what we do. That's where our energy goes. And yes, swirling around us, bad things can happen. But if we are in close communion with God, if we our hearts, then that is the place that no one can touch. It's hard. It's hard work, it requires discipline, but let me just tell you something, there is nothing more important than that. You can lose your job, you can lose your home, you can lose your health, you can lose all those things, but you can never lose God, and God will never lose you. And when you stay there, you start to become so much more powerful, and this is what Jesus is saying, stop focusing on what they tell you. Stop falling for their lies. Don't let the actors win. Don't let their bosses win. They are trying to kill you. But I will always hold you. I will hold you in the palm of my hand. I will redeem you. I will lift you up no matter when they kick you down. Focus on that. Don't give them your heart. And they will try to take it and sometimes it'll feel easier. Watch. You're gonna watch people who know it's wrong but as the tide turns and we descend into whatever it is we're headed to as a nation, it will start to feel like people who know better are going with the wrong things. It's just how it happens historically. That doesn't need to be you because your heart will be guarded. You will be living as the righteous. You will be paying attention to what Jesus did, doing what Jesus did, focusing on what Jesus cared about, and following in his footsteps. Remembering that even if that leads to your form of a cross, that the cross even is not the end of that story. You folks have already lived resurrection. 
But if you're sitting here or there, wherever you are, that means even if you've faced what might feel like a death, you've made it through. You've already gone through hard things and survived them. You are here. Your heart still beats. Your mind is still with us. Your body is carrying you from one place to another. God is still active in you. And so first and foremost, commit to keeping that heart beating and coursing through your blood. God's commands, God's love, God's power. Be wise as serpents, but gentle as doves. Feel the power and strength and love of God, and no matter what they try to do to you, it can't touch here. Remember that, and then we're going to do this together. We will make it, and God will take us. Amen. Amen.